Hey guys, Chris Connor here from Gorilla Filmmaker and today I'm gonna show you how to place an epic sci-fi robot with an explosive result in your films using the amazing Make Big Films VFX platform. Let's take a look. Falcon 9, ready for x -Fall. How sick was that? Now guys, this is a brand new monthly Grail Filmmaker tutorial series in collaboration with the awesome guys from Make Big Films. Stay alert to show you how to pull off amazing VFX scenes for any of your projects in an easy, accessible and super fun way. I'll have the link in the description for you guys to check them out. So before we jump into After Effects and start editing our footage, I need to tell you a few guidelines or rules when it comes to approaching scenes like this from the production and filming perspective. Number one, pre-plan your VFX scenes in advance to fit the VFX assets you have. The way you do this is by starting off from the Make Big Films platform and browsing the available assets. After I check the robot's movements, angles, etc., I noted down how I need to direct those specific shots to make sure that in post-productions, those VFX assets match. That is a very important rule to keep in mind, guys. Now, number two, sometimes less is actually more. Instead of trying to pull off crazy camera moves and complex perspectives, make things simple and effective by using a nice handheld camera motion. And finally, third rule, have fun and trust in the edit. It is actually very common to feel a bit out of place when filming scenes like this that have big VFX elements in them. Whether you're pretending that an explosion is happening or the ground bursts in front of you, when you actually bring all the threads of filmmaking into one singular point, then it will come alive and it will all click in place. Of course, if you want to learn more about filmmaking and specifically my style, I teach you everything you need to know in the Gorilla Filmmaker platform through my specialized courses speedballing you from beginner to pro in no time. From my techniques, hacks and tricks, filming methodology and approach, as well as everything between gear, coloring, sound design, VFX design and so much more. This is the definitive online filmmaking platform for you. Check it out by hitting the Gorilla Filmmaker link down below, right next to the 15% off discount code. And if this inspires you, then make sure to join me and become a Gorilla Filmmaker yourself. So with that said, let's fire up After Effects and let's get started. Okay guys, so here we are within After Effects and I have the robot composition ready to go. A few things to talk about here. Now, this is the final rendered shot, right? So let's take a look at the original. As I told you guys, the trick here is to pre-plan this shot based on the VFX assets. But what do we mean about that? If you actually just stay on this frame and I open the robot asset, you're going to see a few things, right? One, the scale matches, but also the light and kind of like the weather conditions match as well. Now, of course, if I go to the asset itself individually and I turn off some effects, you will see how it looks as a raw file, basically, versus what it looks when composed in. And we're going to talk all about that. When it comes to visual effects, guys, the first thing to do is to track your clip. And why we need to track it is because this is a handheld um, shot clip and we have quite a bit of movement as you can see so in order for an asset to stick in place we need to track our clip now there are various ways to do this whether that is by hitting right click and going to track camera uh, you can track the motion or you can go super advanced and track it in mocha now believe it or not for this one track motion really helps because we working with a very blurred shot when it comes to the background versus this side is very crisp and in focus. So if I try to solve this 
by using the built-in camera system is actually going to try to find point to track here versus where I actually want it. But even so, sometimes it just doesn't do the best of work. But if you use a simple motion track, which is basically place this track point in somewhere in the scene where there's a visible differentiation when it comes to what you want to track, and then if you hit right on the right side in the tracker settings, position as well as rotation, you're going to get a second tracking point, and that is going to calculate any actual rotation that happens within your shot. So the first tracking point tracks the position, and the second one tracks the rotation. So if I press play here, After Effects is actually going to go through all the frames and track those two points and then it's going to create the tracking data necessary for me to use when it comes to my asset. Now I'm not going to bore you through this process guys as you can see as you just press play, analyze forward, analyze backwards and the program will scrape through, take its time depending on how demanding your footage is and it's going to track. But as you can see even here guys is doing a great job following those points. Now what you do after is you go to layer, new, null object, which as you can see down here, and then you apply a target, you select null one, and you hit OK, and then you hit apply, and it's going to apply that tracking data to your null object. So if I go back and I actually open this null, you can see it right here. I will also hit P to bring up the position, and you can see all of the individual frames underneath tracking that seen in terms of position and remember rotation as well and that is it now all i have to do is bring in my asset in this case the robot let's take it off and actually isolate this which is my robot directly from make big films platform and then what you do once you place it in you simply grab the whip tool and you link it to your null once you do that the asset itself is going to move in space and replicate that camera movement to make it match. What am I looking for now to make this even better? Where well, the obvious thing is, of course, the depth of field. The first thing I'm going to do, go right here, is to put a blur effect. And how do you do that? You actually go to effects, blur and sharpen, and you select camera lens blur. As you can see, by default, it all put a bit of blur, but of course you can go right here and say, hey, I want the blue radius to be 10, for example, and it will make it even more. Now, you have to play with this depending on your shot and find the sweet spot, but all you usually have to do is kind of like go to 100%, right, and check how much de-blurred sections of your image is, and then play with the blue radius to match that exact look. Now the next things that you can do, if I turn this off, is to try to match the contrast as well as the colors of the VFX assets to how your raw footage looks, depending on your white balance or the scene itself in terms of light, whether it was a sunny day, an overcast day, or something else within a studio, you need to spend some time and control the assets contrast and colors to better match your scene. So, Usually how I like to do this is by bringing in a curves effect and you go to effects, color correction, and you select curves. Curves is a great tool because it allows you to all want control the RGB, but also the individual colors. So if I open this up here, guys, you can see what I'm trying to do is basically make the asset a bit less contrasty to match the raw file of the camera. Thankfully, The Make Big Films assets are really high quality and as you can see here, I have a lot of latitude to play with and try to match the shadowiest parts of my image as well as the highlights to my existing scene. Lastly, another thing that I can do is just play a bit with the colors and I personally like to do this in different levels, which means once I know I nailed my contrast, I don't want to mess with the other curves, I'm just going to create a new curves effect and play with the colors there. And all I have to do here, this is a very small adjustment, is just make it a bit less blue and bring up a bit more of those green hues. Now, if we play this, you can already see how cool 
it looks in motion. This is it for this shot, guys. I personally think it came out great. Now, when it comes to color grading, this is a very advanced topic. And of course, once you've done this for a while, you create your own color grading uh, style. And I take you through extreme detail when it comes to my color grade and what I call Cinegrade technique at the Gorilla Filmmaker courses. So make sure to check those out if you're interested. Now, let's move on to the second scene, which is the explosion, which is the most interesting one, I would say, because of course, explosions, there's a salsa man. So as you can see here, guys, as it plays through, this is a very cool shot, and I'm going to take you through. We basically have the gun firing, then the ground bursting with the fire, and then the robot kind of like goes away behind the smoke, and that was it. Now, this is a rock clip. The character shoots and pretends the explosion happened. First of all, we have the robot. We have a new asset from the platform. We placed it in and we tracked it in place with our null object, as I showed you guys before. Then we have the explosions happening. So if we start grazing through, we can see the explosions start appearing. And then after the explosion, just for a split second, right? We see the ground bursting up. The way you do this, of course, is by bringing all of your assets in. So if I, let's say, select my ground asset and I start moving it around, you can see how it looks. But let's go a few frames later, which is here. So I have my ground asset. And what I need to do is try to find the correct place that the asset really fits in place. If we actually turn everything else off, you can see that it's there, for example and it bursts out and it looks like that. And again, the exact same thing, guys. What I did is I took the time, grade this, and put a few effects so that it really matches my existing camera recording. A few of those, of course, include, you know, color effects. Tritone is another great effect if you go to color correction, color correction, and then you select the tritone effect. What you can actually do with this is select the highlights, the methods, and the shadows and tell it what color you want to be. So if I open this up, I basically took, you know, the highlights is kind of like this area here and the clouds. The mid-tones are obviously the ground itself. And then the shadows are like the shadows of the character. And this way, I try to manipulate the asset to really fit the uh, existing camera recording. And then, of course, things like camera blur and curves like we discussed before. And then the position itself within the space will define how the asset is going to play throughout this motion. Now, another thing to know is how to layer your VFX assets. For example, the robot is behind the ground explosion, but then the explosions themselves are between the robot and the ground explosion. This way, when everything happens through, boom, it makes sense. And then we have an explosion glow. This I want you to want to talk to you guys about. So what you do here is go to layer, new, adjustment layer. And I like to name my layers by hitting right click and of course select rename just so I know what happens because after a while it can get a lot. So I want to put an explosion glow effect to really bring that fire of the VFX element to life. The way you do this is by going to effects, and you can either do stylize and select glow, which is the After Effects baked in glow effect, or you can use one of my favorite plugins, but it is third party, which is called Deep Glow. The reason why I like this plugin more is because it allows for more versatility and fine tuning of the glow look I want. Now, the last thing I do is I go over here to my masks, and if you tr hold this, you can find what's called the ellipse tool, which basically means it just creates, let's go back, it just creates an ellipse mask by default, right? And the reason why I want this is because I want to create a mask, as I have done right here, guys, and to mostly cover the explosion part of the composition. That way, the glow is more focused on the explosion happening versus the entire composition. And now, when the fire goes, you see, we have nothing here, and the, the fire starts appearing and kind of like going on, boom, the glow 
really brings the fire to turn it on and off to life, right? It just makes it feel as if the fire is alive. After you've done this, if I turn this off, it's back, of course, to color grading and scintigrating your clips. As you guys can see, if I put it to full res so we can see the full look. So if I go out to 100% and we let it load, again, this is a very heavy composition with a lot of effects happening at the same time. There we go. So if I go here, let's go back to 50 and I go through, it's just beautiful. Now, the trick with explosions is to actually implement a pulse distortion effect that I'm going to share with you guys in a different tutorial because this tutorial will just get on for way too long and will get way too technical. The last thing is a negative frame. What a negative frame, guys, is, if we go back to quarter, is these frames right here. So if I go frame by frame, scroll back, you can see that the explosion has already happened, but it hasn't reached the peak moment. The peak moment, I would say, is about there. So on the frame before, what I like to do is go to layer, new adjustment layer, which is this one right here, and call it invert flash. And then go to effect channel right here and select invert. What this effect does is it likes what is and basically inverts the entire image. So it makes the white blacks, it makes, it makes the reds blues, and so forth. But if you incorporate this just for a single frame, as you can see here, guys, I cropped the adjustment layer to just last one frame. If you do this, it creates this very quick, literal split second flash to the eyes. And once you play the whole thing, it just creates that extra flash to the naked eye, which you cannot really identify it because it only lasts a singular flame, but it really adds to the experience of the visuals that take place. Now, lastly, guys, I have the space drone landing scene, but this one is gonna be in a separate tutorial because while some of the techniques discussed here, of course, obviously apply to this one as well when it comes to the VFX assets and so forth, we took it a step further and this time the character is overlapping the visual effects as well as we have some very cool heat distortion occurring from the energy that the engines of the spaceship cast, right? So this one is gonna be on a separate tutorial, guys. So make sure to keep your eyes out for that one as well. Okay, guys, so that's a wrap when it comes to this tutorial. Make sure to let me know what you thought about it in the comments down below. And of course, if you have a recommendation of something you really wanna see, let me know about that as well. Don't forget to check out the awesome guys at Make Big Films platform. And of course, if you want to become a Gorilla Filmmaker, then join me with 15% off at GorillaFilmmaker.com and let's get started.